Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Pain, and today we're going to be talking about a special grafting method called piggyback grafting. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this particular lime tree. Let me actually bring it a little closer to you. But you can see here it's got these beautiful blossoms on here. Um, and it's a dwarf, and I'll actually read the label here to you. It's a bear's seedless dwarf lime. It's the most popular seedless lime variety that you'll find in your stores or in bars. Um, and again, it's, it's also known as the Persian lime as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this lime tree and graft it onto this citrus variety that's behind me. And if you take a look, I've got these huge citrus fruit, which I'll pick here. But it's been a mystery to the owner, and I'm actually going to um, destroy one of these fruit by cutting it open here. Um, just so the viewers can see what we're dealing with here. So if you take a look at it, you can see that this is not particularly the best fruit to actually be growing in your backyard. If you zoom in here, you can actually see there's a million seeds in there. It's hollow in the center, so that would be area for more fruit otherwise. Um, and if I smell it, it kind of has a grapefruit, lemon um, type smell and you can see that the skin is huge as well so the fruits quite small in the middle of this so not a desirable citrus um, variety um, it may have been a seed planting that was done that was done here you know years ago and has grown into some mystery fruit and now we've got some mystery results we don't know if it's a grapefruit or a lemon or um, or what it's actually become so we're actually going to um, be grafting it with something that we want. We want limes here in the garden. So we're actually going to convert the tree behind me into a lime tree with a grafting method that has not been um, too popularly discussed. And this is called piggyback grafting. And the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this tree. And we're, so we're basically going to take our saw here and we're going to, we're basically going to come in here and basically remove these lower branches um, that are down here. So the first step is to cut these branches out. So we'll get this out of the way. And next we're gonna cut this branch as well. Quite dramatic. Here we go. So the tree's gone. What we're now going to do is take our lime variety and we're going to install it adjacent to this rootstock over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, make a hole, insert the plant, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to graft this um, these trees together. So here we go, we're now going to install this lime tree. I just noticed there's this bee that's pollinating the lime. Check this out. That's pretty cool. There's a honeybee at work taking the pollen from the stamens and, and mixing it around and getting it on top of that pistil, which will fertilize the fruit. How cool is that? <laughs> Anyways, here we go. We're now going to install the lime tree. I just started uh, preparing a hole adjacent to the rootstock of the mystery citrus um, tree that we just had um, pruned down. So I've got a hole over here. We're just going to add now some compost to the hole. Make sure that you actually use something similar to, I've got the bag over here. I'll read it to you real quick. It says, grow mulch. It's made by Kellogg's. You can also use an amend. Um, but this is like for your in-ground pottings. I just want to make sure you don't use anything like a potting mix, which has too much vermiculite and too much perlite too much moss that'll actually retain water and actually rot your trees. It'll cause root rot among a variety of other diseases for your citrus. So make sure you use a good compost um, that you either make in your own garden or that you purchase. And we're just gonna add a few handfuls of compost to the base. And mix it around with the native soil. And then we're just gonna add our, our our bear's lime tree. And whenever I actually pull a, um, a plant out of its pot, I always like to inspect the root ball and make sure that it's not root bound. And as you can see, the roots haven't coiled, uh, which is perfect. And I'm not gonna disturb it. And we're just gonna put it right in the, right in the hole that we've made. So we're gonna set that down. 
and you notice that I'm leaning it a little bit towards the plant that we just pruned. So we're going to lean that in there as these two will be grafted together momentarily. So we're going to put that in, cover it with some of the native soil, and we'll add a little bit more compost to the top of that. And then we're gonna thoroughly water it will be our next step. I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So start. here we are now, we're gonna get ready to now graft. This here is the um, lime, the bear's lime that we're gonna do the piggyback graft onto this mystery citrus um, rootstock. So what I wanna point out to you is when grafting, you wanna make sure that the cambium, the cambium layers of the two plants touch and I'm trying to zoom in here so you can actually take a look at the tree trunk and you'll notice that on the outer part right here is the bark and then right under the bark is the green cambium tissue and that's like about a couple of cell layer thick living tissue that actually is transporting all the sugars and the waters up and down the tree so the cambium tissue lies right underneath the bark and then the rest of this is all wood and that basically provides the plant with the support and the strength to support you know its branches and the leaves and ultimately the fruit so we got to make sure that this really thin cambium layer between the tree trunk and the um, bear's lime are actually in contact with one another and i'll show you how we're going to accomplish that right now so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the bark so we're going to first position this graft where we think it's going to heal. So we're going to put these two branches in contact like so. And I, all I'm going to do here is open the bark like so. so. We're coming in with the knife and we're just cutting into the tree. And we're going to do another cut to basically fit the lime within it. So that's now open. That some more and some more and again so now what we're going to do is take the branch and we're going to try to fit that right in there as well let me see if I can get out of the shade so you can see where that's going to fit right in there I'm going to try to make this a little bit deeper a little bit larger that and that let me get that out of there and then we're now just gonna open the bark off the line so we're just gonna shave up and what's gonna be a v-shape to basically fit right into that same position and all of that cambium tissue that's right under the bark, I'm gonna try to get out of the sun so you can see that, that's gonna fit right in there. We're doing it on both sides to basically fit right in there. And as long as some of those cells come into contact, it'll actually start healing in as little as seven to 14 days. But we're gonna come back in about eight weeks and, and see where we're at. So these will start growing together over the next, as I said, seven to 14 days, they'll actually heal. Within eight weeks, we can actually take off um, the wrap, which we're gonna do right now. So here I am now with my string. You can actually do this with um, twine as I'm doing here today. Another method I've seen other people use successfully is using something like this, some black electrical tape could work as well. But I'm gonna do this so you can actually see the progress. So we're just going to go like so. We're going to fit the two wounds together and then just wrap it as tight as you possibly can. You're forcing them to basically exchange their waters and exchange their sugars and ultimately they'll grow as one. What's also going to happen is this being a dwarf variety, being that it's now grafted to a standard rootstock, will actually grow to a standard height. So we're gonna have a standard bear's lime 
tree growing right here in place of that mystery citrus fruit tree. So he's wrapping it and putting it on his, again, as tight as we can squeeze that together. There it goes. And my success rate with doing approach graft is very close to 100%. And the reason being is this, this root is gonna wanna grow still. It's gonna try to put out its own suckers and try to support another one of those mystery um, you know, fruits. But this has also got its own root stock and it's gonna support its branches that are up above. Eventually the two will agree to grow, to grow together as one, which like I said, usually takes about eight weeks. And then we can take off this wrap as it'll have enough callus tissue to support to support itself. So here we are. We're gonna tie that on as tight as we can. And, and that concludes it. The other thing I want to share with you today is I've got this product over here called Ivy Organics. It's a three-in-one tree guard paint. And it says just add water, and it says the natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. And you'll see that um, in other videos, we've showed some citrus trees that actually suffered major um, sunburn. And here we've now got this trunk that was once shaded by a large canopy of branches and leaves, but now it's actually exposed to the sun. As you can see, there's quite a bit of light coming in here. To prevent it from damage, we're actually gonna put some of this product. The organic, um, this actually comes in three colors, is white, brown, and green. Um, but we're actually going to use white today and we're just going to put the powder here in the can. We're going to add water halfway as the directions read and then stir that up. And then we're just going to add the oils and the oils actually help repel any insects. This has got some bubble wrap we'll take off here. But this oil vial actually has oils in it that actually repel insects from getting into now the exposed wood. It also keeps rodents from gnawing on it. But this here is all exposed and it's going to take probably another five years to actually heal. Um, but in the meantime, we're actually going to keep it protected with this ivory organics, which will keep insects out of it. And then we can fill up the rest with water to the top and continue stirring. And then what we're going to do is just take our paintbrush here. And we can now coat all of these exposed surfaces with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. And we can actually even put it on the Buddy graft as well. To keep it all nice and cool so it's not putting any energy to trying to heal its damaged bark. And it can put all of its energy towards making more branches and more leaves and just concentrate on healing and growing together as one. And, and that concludes it. Just grafted a bear's or the Persian lime right onto a mystery um, citrus rootstock. And we've now created a variety of citrus that this family is gonna enjoy for the years to come. I'll actually be doing a um, a review of this in another 8 to 12 weeks so you can actually see the results of this so be sure to subscribe down below and also don't forget to like this if you've actually enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.